Okay, so this is a topic I've been wanting to cover for a long time. And it's just awesome having this podcast now because I can just express myself without having to worry about how other people may feel about what I have to say. Because <clears throat> it's certainly not going to be uh, well received by many, many people. <laughs> and um, a lot of the people that aren't going to receive it favorably are people who see themselves um, at the bleeding edge of what I would call personal transformation. And now that I've got this podcast, I've just, I've, I'm just experiencing much more freedom within myself. I'm experiencing um, just, I just feel liberated being able to just record the tr my truth <laughs> without worrying about how it's going to be received by someone else. And, you know, I've always been hyper aware of, um, my perspectives and how they can, um, you know, trigger people. And, um, you know, there are some circumstances where if you just express your truth relentlessly, it, it creates so much discomfort in the energy that it's not conducive to like collaborating or, you know, having fun or connecting with people. And, you know, I, I've, I'm at a point now where, um, you know, I'm aware that I'm aberrant and that my perspectives are atypical. And, um, you know, I'm aware enough to realize that withholding my truth in certain, circum, certain circumstances is the ideal scenario. And now that I have this outlet of this podcast, where I have zero attachment to who's listening, to what their reaction is. And it's not about me what, trying to change someone. In fact, it's the opposite. And that's what I want to speak about on this podcast. And that is the topic of the nature of transformation. And... My, my hope is that after this, after you listen to this and after you hear this, that any resistance that you feel because of it, um, because of it, that it will challenge your perspective, I'm sure of it, um, is that you feel into the emotions that come up around it and just allow yourself to feel them and see if you can understand them. You know, so <laughs> I'm just going to come right out and say it. We will never reach a state of harmony individually or collectively whilst we are trying to change. Trying to change is in fact part of the, the reason why there is so much disharmony. So intending to change something, intending to transform something, is the opposite of accepting something. And so here we have a scenario where there's this massive community of well-intended people who can see all of the, uh, the chaos and disorder in the world, who can see all the pain and the suffering, have a, have a powerful intention and drive to pull those people out of suffering. But how, that, how they're interpreting that is they want to change everything. They want to transform everything. And... Of course, it's totally natural. I totally get it. But the way that we're going about it collectively and mainly individually as well is creating further and further space between um, 
the root cause, you know, what I would call the kernel, which is part of the reason why this podcast is called the kernel. It is because we have to accept the kernel, the root cause of everything that is creating the pain, that is creating the suffering, and accept it wholly. Without, and that means not changing it, without trying to change it. And, you know, scientifically, we already know this. That the only true way to transform anything, to change its state, is to bring the light of awareness into it. And that awareness is filtered through the lens of perspective or perception. And that is what manifests matter. It's the meaning of what we are observing that causes it to change state. And this is why, and and many people know this now, that in order to reconcile something, you know, properly, especially within ourselves, is to understand it, the truth of it, to understand the perspective of that thing, not to negate it, not to go into a situation where there are opposing aspects or opposing parts of us, or, you know, whether it's people where... <clears throat> whether it's people, whether it's aspects of our own nature. You cannot go into it seeking to invalidate the other perspective because both are valid. And so when you go into something and you seek to change the other thing, that is creating disharmony. It's creating further discord. It holds the energy of oppression. It holds the energy of rejection. And just an underlying intention to change something to the perspective that we hold. Even to the point where, you know, most people who are you know, I'm making assumptions here, but I'm assuming that a lot of people who are listening to this uh, will have come across inner child work at some point or some um, some spiritual teacher's uh, um, <laughs> interpretation of inner child work. And all of the modalities I've come across, they're teaching people to go into it Um, in order to change the perspective of the other thing, rather than seeking to understand it and validate it. Because once you become adept at um, receiving a thought and giving that thought unconditional presence, being unconditionally present with the thought, what you notice is that your presence with it um, causes it to turn into a vision. When, you, when you're when you present with a thought, even if it's negative, and, and many of the greatest spiritual te- te- supposed teachers on the planet and quantum physicists, they're still saying, your thoughts aren't true. Not all thoughts are valid. But I'm telling you, they are. Every single thought, and look at and if you look at a murmuration of of starlings, they receive a signal. There's no consideration of whether it's true or not. No consideration of whether it's true. It's always valid. They receive it, and they respond. They interpret and respond. Yes, behavior happens, but the the interpretation still happens but it's based on an absolute trust of the signal. And yet human beings, we say, oh, here's a thought. No, it's negative, so it's not true. Yes, it is true. It is true. Whether it's actually true or not is irrelevant because what it contains is a hidden meaning and a vision 
that if we give that thought our unconditional presence, it transforms. <laughs> Begins as a thought. We give it our unconditional presence. It, the thought expands. We give it more unconditional presence. It evolves into a vision. And so we give that vision our unconditional presence and that vision expands and we stay with it. We continue to give it our unconditional pres presence, intending to decipher what it means to us. Meaning is all that matters. Meaning, the marriage of mind and spirit, of thought and emotion. What does it mean? The vision contains the meaning. So we stay with it, we give it our unconditional presence, and we interpret the meaning for us. <laughs> we stay with it, and an emotion is evoked, and so we want to decipher what that means. Now, it won't always be pleasurable. It won't always be enjoyable. It won't always lead you to joy. But that's the whole point. Because you're, you're made of shadow and light. You're positive and negative. And most of us are in huge resistance to our shadow aspects, to our negative aspects. And so a lot of the time it will be the thought will be leading us to an emotion we're resisting or to a belief that we're in resistance to. But here's the thing. Now, if you've listened to some of my other podcasts, you'll know that I'm an advocate for denial. I advocate for denial. I advocate for um, dissociation. I advocate for deception. I understand the nature of these things and I understand their power and the, lo and the loving nature of these things, the light that's contained within them. I understand it. But here's the thing, I understand them in context of being someone who receives every thought because I understand that every thought contains often a repressed desire but more importantly a hidden meaning of an unconscious interpretation I have about some aspect of my life and contained within that thought that then evolves when we give it our unconditional presence. It's almost like fertilizing an egg. We give it our presence and then it manifests into a vision. And the moment that we imbue meaning into that, or the hidden meaning is revealed, and we understand it, that is the moment that we've reconciled an unconscious perception we, that we formed, possibly due to some trauma that we've had in the past, possibly due to some ancestral trauma that's still being held within our DNA. The thought comes, we receive the thought, we give it our unconditional presence. It, it, um, it evolves into a, a vision. The vision contains a hidden meaning. And it brings understanding, and that understanding is imbued with acceptance, you see. You can't choose to accept something. You can only give it your unconditional presence until you understand it. And then the acceptance just happens. <laughs> so you can't receive a thought and have it be a negative thought and then turn away from it and say that you accept it. <laughs> Uh, 
every thought, every thought is valid. Every single thought is valid. It is your nature trying to reveal something to you that's going to enable you to become more of what you have the potential to become. It's coming to you to say, now is a good time for you to reconcile this because you're ready. You weren't mature enough as a four-year-old child to reconcile the truth of that trauma. So I'm bringing it to you now because now I know you're mature enough to reconcile this. Now I know you're mature enough to reconcile the truth of this and claim the I am of it because now is the moment that you're ready. And so all it requires is trust. All it requires is trust. And, you know, underneath all this, because so many of us are still in the habit of, um, well, we're still in the, this belief that thoughts are toxic or thoughts are part of the problem. <laughs> trying to avoid our thoughts, trying to still our mind all the time. It's quite the opposite. The mind is programmed to protect um, the innocence of the spirit so that it's not tainted by perception. So deception is obviously one of the most powerful tools at its disposal, dissociation, denial, narcissism. All of these are tools, mechanisms to hide the truth because the reality of that truth is deemed to be too detrimental to the evolution of the spirit, to it evolving and becoming more and more and more and more. So we have to learn to trust the mind again that it knows, it knows the ideal time to bring that thought. It knows the ideal time that we're ready and mature enough to accept an unconscious truth without it deterring us from continuing to evolve and expand, without it preventing us from continually evolving. And so... I want to bring transformation back into the picture. <laughs> Can you see how oppressive it is to try and change yourself without understanding yourself first? <laughs> Going into a scenario with another human being, intending to invalidate their perspective so that they adopt yours. Can you, can you feel how um, ignorant it is really? But it's really harsh. It's really unloving. It's entirely unevolved. We have to go into every interaction with another human being with the intention to understand them, not to invalidate their perspective. Not to Bring them over to your perspective. You have to seek to understand them. Understand their perspective. Entirely validate it. Because it is valid from their perspective. And it's it's the understanding that, it, that enables the transformation to take place. Because what it does is it creates the space, the space, for both perspectives to coexist. You see, you know, lots of spiritual teachers are teaching people how to um, do things similar to this, which are, which, you know, are effective, but they're playing a zero sum game with each other, trying to bring one of the perspectives over to the, to the perspective um, that holds the desire. So the typical scenario is there's a part of us that wants to create something and there's an opposing part of us that wants to resist that. 
You know, for example, we might want to be, be successful at something and then there's a part of us that is, has a fear, holds a fear of success, you see. And so the typical mindset is to go into this and to convince the, the, the opposing part of us to come on board and uh, with, with the desire. You know, sometimes this works actually, but what will work every single time is for both um, parts of us to understand each other, then they can coexist without resistance. You see? You're not trying to change the other one. You're not resisting the other one anymore. And what that means is you own them again. And to own something is to truly take it as yourself, to love it. And when you're able to do that, what you begin to realize is that, that those parts of you, they, they enter into a state of, of being pure potential. It's pre-manifested energy at that point. So because we've dissolved our own resistance to understanding them, once they're understood, they just become part of us and they're just within us. And we hold the perspective of understanding that those parts of us continue to be with us exactly as they are now, exactly as they are now. With the holding the perspective that they have now, but with each part understanding the other's perspective. And because there's no resistance to either, um, to each uh, polarized aspect, then they just exist within us as pure potential. And the best way to, you know, a good metaphor for this is to think of um, pre- so pre-manifested energy, for example, the, as the primordial substance. like It's like that's analog and manifested reality is digital. Analog is the substance. You know, it's the void, it's pure space, the fabric of space, it's the ocean of space, however you want to view it. It exists as a sea and an ocean of pure potential, potential to become anything and then you have the manifested reality which is anything you know digital that contains light and so the best way to look at it is once both aspects understand each other once the opposing aspects understand each other it's they become part of the primordial analog substance again and so there's a state of knowing that I am that. I am someone who holds fear of success and I am someone who desires it. And that, that is part of who and what I am, but it exists pre-manifestation. So it, they're not manifesting anything. I'm just holding the understanding that I am that. I am that. And so I'm aware that both of those experiences can be evoked again. They can be expressed again. They can become real again. Or they can remain dormant. But I know that I am that. And none of those aspects ever have to change, ever, ever, because I am that. I am terrified. I am full of desire and enthusiasm and passion. I am resistant. I am. We don't have to dissolve our, the, we don't have to change the perspective of the opposing aspect. We only have to understand it because our unconditional presence 
is what enables the transformation. Unconditional presence brings forth understanding. And acceptance happens through osmosis. And once that happens, we can continue moving forward, knowing that I am that. I am that. And you can feel how loving that is. You can just feel it. You validate the perspective of that. You claim it as part of yourself. I own you. You are part of me. We are one. You don't have to change any part of yourself. I understand you. And then we continue manifesting whatever it is we want without resistance and without having to change anything. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that, that big bubble of, that giant bubble of the personal transformation space, transform yourself, change yourself. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I totally understand, you know, the desire to want to be different, to want to have, um, uh, for wanting to live in a, in a world that is transformed. You know, I'm, I get it. I totally get it. But the mechanism to that place, the desire to be there um, is one thing, but the path towards it is radically different from the approach that's being taken now. Trying to oppress ourselves and change our perspective and validate ourselves, withhold our thoughts, <laughs> um, trying to consciously express our will when it suits us. Uh, I mean, it's chaos. It's chaos. It's It's just... We're just oppressing ourselves relentlessly, oppressing ourselves when all we need to do is understand, understand our own nature. You know, make a decision to be with every thought, make a decision to be unconditionally present with it and validate its perspective until that thought becomes a vision, until we can interpret its meaning. And then we can understand it acceptance comes and we've expanded <laughs> radically in fact the transformation's already taken place because what was unseen is now seen we all know that when radiation light in the form of radiation when it's observed it changes state it's our presence that transforms. It's the only thing. Okay. That's, uh, I thought this was going to actually be quite a long one, but I think I, um, I've torn, I've torn the, ba ripped the bandaid off, <laughs> or torn the scab off possibly, but, um, I know there'll be more podcasts that I do on this topic because um, it it's it's not some I know it's not something that people will have heard before, but I feel like it is going to resonate with a lot of people. But it is going to get a lot of people's heckles up as well, and um, you know, especially people who are out in the world trying to change other people, trying to heal them. And um, th there's a lot of, um, I mean, when you truly understand this at the deepest level, you know, if you're a healer who's trying to heal someone or fix them, um, you know, that intention to fix someone is imbued with um, the desire to change them, to change something that's broken, to change something that's, uh, not right or whatever it may be, but you can bring, still bring this into, um, you know, your approach to healing. But the way that you um, express that, well, the way you get to what you would call the healing 
is through unconditional presence and understanding. Um, so, yeah, subtle, but, you know, huge. Because one of these methods involves oppression and the other doesn't. <laughs> yeah, allowing an acceptance. And, yeah, so that's the right place to stop. I know there'll be more on this topic. And I'll look forward to that next podcast. Okay, that's all for now. Cheers.